a business owner. She's a digital strategist. Uh oh. No. Uh oh. All right. Yeah, you do. My fault, everybody. I apologize. <laughs> All right. Uh, she's a digital strategist, a business owner, and my favorite uh, science fiction writer. How cool is that? So come on down and let's, uh, let's hear about science fiction writing. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here tonight and share my experience studying science fiction. Because what I found is it doesn't matter how I segment these stories, whether it's by culture, time of history, this is an art form of storytelling that reflects current culture but shapes future culture. These science fiction writers are not setting out to predict an accurate future. What they actually want to like explain is our current traumas, our ideas of beliefs, and all these negative experiences that we have to suffer through. And the reason that we see so many futuristic settings in science fiction is because science fiction is most productive when it's in direct opposition of real and true realities, right? Because the mind then doesn't have to fight them off. It doesn't have to reject them because it's not real. We have to understand how stories work in the human mind. Stories let us, allow us to unapologetically and fearlessly look at different situations from several vantage points and several characters' point of view. I'm going to introduce it to you, Stanislaw Lem. He lived in Poland during World War II. He didn't even know he had Jewish ancestry until the Nazis came in and took over. He actually survived by forging his own identity papers and working as a mechanic. The fun part is he would sabotage the Nazi vehicles that he worked on. But his, his science fiction is so provocative because he would talk about how destructive technology can be when it's driven by negative emotion and is driven also by inefficient feelings and emotion and empathy towards the future. He said so eloquently at the end of one of his stories that the world ceased to exist as we had known it and it was remained to this day honeycombed with nothingness, which we can see as a direct reflection of what he experienced during World War II. The Japanese science fiction is absolutely pro thought provoking as well. We look at post-World War II, they were the only country to have suffered a nuclear strike. So we see this preoccupation with apocalyptic, apocalyptic worlds and how they suffered through that. So much of their fiction is trying to understand where they're going as a society. They're trying to understand how are we going to possibly survive in a world that could potentially throw us so much chaos and destruction. So what we really see is that science fiction is really just exploring change and all the different directions that we could go with that change. And what these creators are doing is they're saying, we can go this way or we can go that way. And here are some possible solutions to help us get away from these pain points we're currently suffering from. MIT, or oh, let me talk about Elon Musk. He's one of the famous inventors that actually grew up reading science fiction. He reads it today and he says, this has shaped my view so much of the world. And this is what allows him to think outside the box and keep inventing and seeing if he can make the things that these same science fiction writers were talking about. Um, there's so many examples I could give you, the liquid-fueled um, rocket, the cell phone, even the submarine. That's why Jules Verne comes out and says, anything can make, anyone that man can make imagine, another man can make real. MIT takes science fiction so seriously that they even have courses on it. They have a course called Science Fiction to Science Fabrication, where they actually build out these inventions and then like talk about how they are going to impact the world. Um, MIT has a science fiction society, has like over hundreds of members, like 30 librarians just to manage this thing, um, 60,000 books, and um, they're like the third largest collection of science fiction available in the world for these science fiction and um, inventors to look at. So one question we're asking is how do we program our robots to follow socially acceptable behaviors? So for instance, as more androids are in our society, what happens when you have it go and get your prescription for you? How do you make sure it stands in line patiently and, you know, like pays for the prescription instead of robbing the place because that would be the most efficient way for it to complete its task. Well, some researchers over at Georgia said, how about, you know, we learn through ethics and 
and values through our stories that we read. That's how we learn. So let's make robots in our own image. Let's create them with a brain so that we can upload our stories and then run programs in the background so they can learn ethics through those stories. So of course I find this absolutely fascinating. I tweet it out. SMU Community Outreach responds and says, well you better not allow them to play video games. <laughs> right? And that's, that's actually an intelligent statement to make if that's our fear. Well, the researcher came back and said, any one story may negatively impact the AI. I suggest giving it all stories created by a culture so that the common themes and values can bubble to the surface and others will fade. So my call to action for you tonight is to read more science fiction. Be mindful of the content that you put out into the world because it affects not only human minds but also artificial minds. Stay tuned later this year because my own science fiction is being released and I want you to read it and live long and prosper.